Okay, now am I am I back? You we can see your screen. But can you hear me? I can hear you as well. Okay, let me uh, fire this thing off and see what happens. Boing. This is live coding. This is how this works. So we push this into presentation mode and here we are. So all the plumbing's done, right? I don't hear anybody. We can we can hear you. Okay, you're, you're fine. Okay, Bye. let's fire it well. Okay, we'll start off with a little bit about me and, and forth. Uh, I'm a retired scientific applications and operating system programmer. I got paid to write assembly, lots of assembly. Assembly language was my first language. It was my first love. Um, the next language I learned was Fortran, uh, but I wrote that only when management required me to. Um, and then later, uh, I ended up uh, working a lot with the Unix systems, uh, which, of course, was awk and sed and grep and the shell. Um, and then later, Perl, and then R. For hobby projects, uh, I, I learned Lisp and Forth and Ruby. I never learned COBOL, APL, Snowball 4, Smalltalk, any of the Algol languages, PHP, Python, or JavaScript. So I was basically unemployable except uh, as an operating system programmer or a scientific application programmer. Uh, I learned fourth in the 1980s uh, by a HES fourth on the Commodore 64. Uh, so a shout out to Bill here. Uh, that was essentially uh, fig forth on a cartridge with uh, uh, access to all the innards of the Commodore 64. And in the mid to late 1990s, uh, I had an HP 100LX palm top PC. This is a marvelous little machine. Uh, it was a 16-bit 8186, which I think it had two megabytes of RAM. Um, I wrote a couple of articles for Fourth Dimensions, uh, wrote some trading system software, uh, mostly uh, used H Fourth and Tom Almy's Fourth Compiler for the 186. And why I stopped writing Fourth, uh, by 1999, I, I had faster machines that ran all my hobby code in Perl. I wasn't using Fourth at work. I was and I was learning Linux and R at work, and it was just got to be too much mental context switching. Uh, it was killing my productivity on on the hobby stuff. So two spun, sunspot cycles pass. He's back, and he brought clams. So the clams' goal is algorithmic music composition and performance live in real time on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So the processor on the Raspberry Pi Pico is called an RP2040. It's a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus uh, with a flexible clock running up to 133 megahertz. It's only got 264 KB RAM on the chip. Uh, Sorry to you, interrupt, Ed. Ed. Yeah. Did you want to be yeah. showing your PowerPoint? Because we can't see your PowerPoint slides. You can't? No, we, we see a, a window with a uh, fan line algorithm music system in the upper left. Okay, and, well, let me. Uh, command line in the lower left. Okay, let me fix file that. window in the upper right. Yeah, okay, let me fix that. So you had more than one screen going at a time and we're not looking at the right one. Sorry about that. Oh, I wish somebody had said something earlier. Is this it? I, I didn't know this wasn't what you wanted us to look at. <laughs> Is this it? 
we see your viewpoint, uh, your PowerPoint now. Command line, algorithmic music, and a me and forth. Me retired, learned, I never learned. 1980s. I'm, I'm sorry, I got six other things going on here right now and didn't. Uh, perfect. Okay. So are we, are we up to where we are? About the RP2040 processor. Yeah. Okay. So let me back that up. Okay. Uh, it's a dual core ARM Cortex M0 processor with a clock running at 133 megahertz. It's, on, it's only got 264 KB of RAM. Uh, it's got two UARTs, two SPI controllers, uh, two I2C controllers, and 16 uh, pulse width modulation channels. Those are usually used for uh, those are usually used for uh, motor control, uh, but uh, they are also used uh, in a lot of lower quality audio applications. Uh, basically, hook a capacitor and a resistor up to it. May, it becomes a, a digital analog converter. You hook a speaker amp onto it, and you got noise. Uh, but I won't be doing that. And it's got a USB controller on it. And it's got eight programmable I.O. state machines for custom peripheral support. Now, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico board has two megabytes of flash on it comes in four versions. There's a plain Pico, which is four bucks and it's surface mount. Um, the Pico H is five bucks to, with mail headers and a serial wire debug connector. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W is six bucks US, a surface mount and has a 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless. Um, and the WH, which is nine bucks, and it has mail headers, but not the serial wild debug connector, and it has wireless. The wireless ones are pretty hard to get. If if you want one, uh, you usually have to uh, either wait uh, to get them in bulk uh, or uh, buy a kit that has one bundled in it. So the software inspirations are uh, HMSL. Uh, this is, has a long history with experimental components, composers. It started out in the, uh, I think in the Amiga days. Uh, it's currently still active. Uh, Phil is uh, working on it. Uh, there's, uh, by the way, all these uh, links are, are live in the slides. Uh, so uh, if you, you want to follow any of these uh, trails, um, you'll be able to click on the slides. Uh, it's based on uh, P4th, uh, which is also the active. Slides will be available after the talk yeah. on uh, forth.org slash svfig. And uh, there'll well, be a I'm, link in the, uh, in the YouTube video. Yeah, I've updated them since then, but the link, the link, is, the link will be the same. But I'll post. No, I'll you, post. you're you're going to send your updates after the talk. You'll send your slides to uh, Dave Jaffe as presented. Oh, okay. And he'll he'll post them on our website. Oh, okay. And then the other the other fourth inspiration is a, a package called Formula. This one appears to have uh, uh, expired. It was designed for improvisation in real time, uh, had a real time operating system in it, it ran on inexpensive hardware. I think it was an Amiga. And it was uh, the papers here, again, they're linked in the references. Um, it turned out there's a Python successor uh, that's alive, but it's, uh, I don't think it's real time. It runs in. I think it runs in Jupyter Notebooks, which is sort of real time. Now, live coding. Uh, live coding is essentially what I'm doing now, which is uh, what uh, the problem was at the beginning. Uh, you, you write some code, uh, you show it on a screen, 
And uh, in the case of uh, music, it's also uh, known as algo rave and it tends to be uh, like a disc jockey. It's, it's in a, uh, a, an electronic dance uh, medium. Uh, that's not how I'll, I'll be using it. Uh, the top lap manifesto, uh, show us your screens. And then there's a whole GitHub repository with a link to all of the projects. Clams isn't there yet. Uh, the architecture claims it'll be a domain-specific language implemented in fourth. Uh, conceptually, it'll it's Chuck semantics with a fourth syntax. Uh, Chuck is a system uh, it was designed at Princeton. It's a, a C plus plus like language, uh, but you you type it and enter it in real time, and it has a, an interpreter and a compiler and a virtual machine that manages all the buffers. Um, and they have they have what they call a laptop orchestra, which is a bunch of people sitting around with laptops all running Chuck. And that's sort of what I have in mind for, for this, except that it'll be a bunch of people sitting around with Raspberry Pi Picos. Uh, the architecture there will be low-level words that do the digital synthesis and the microcontroller audio, uh, uh, mid-level words to construct a signal, a signal flow graph, and high-level words uh, for do the actual algorithmic composition and the performance of the human interface. Now, the fourth base is Zeptoforth. I see Travis is here, uh, so he would... Uh, if you have questions about Zeptoforth, uh, uh, you'll be able to ask him. Uh, it's very highly optimized. It's subroutine threaded. Uh, it allows inline and expansion of words. Uh, many of the primitives, most of the primitives are in assembly. Uh, works for nearly all of the, it uses nearly all of the uh, RP2040 hardware, has an RP2040 assembler, um, and compile to either RAM or Flash, and it has a complete real-time operating system. To, more than I need for this project, but the current limitations doesn't appear to have USB serial support. Uh, you need a UART connection, uh, and the wireless. It's going to support wireless, but it's not. It's not there yet. And there's the repository on Git, uh, GitHub. Um, there's the wiki on GitHub. So the roadmap, uh, the target audio hardware uh, is the Pimeroni Pico Audio Pack. Uh, now these all have digital analog converters. They all have high-end, uh, like 24-bit, uh, 384 megahertz uh, or 192 megahertz uh, sampling rate. The uh, the real real computer music, not this uh, PWM stuff. Uh, this one's about 16 bucks a U.S., uh, but it requires an expander board so you can connect to the UART. That's another nine dollars. Uh, the WaveShare Pico Audio Expansion Module. Uh, this one is about twenty bucks plus U.S. Uh, uh, twenty bucks U.S. plus shipping. Uh, this one ships from China, uh, but Amazon does have them. So uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to wait three weeks for your audio expansion module, uh, you can get them uh, from Amazon. Uh, it includes speakers. And you don't need uh, you don't need the expander board for this one. Uh, an ordinary breadboard will work. And then there's a, a rather nice unit uh, called the WaveShare Overall Evaluation Board. It has, in addition to the audio, um, it it's about fifty bucks. And again, Amazon has them. It includes a, a three point five inch resistive touchscreen and a serial to USB adapter and a micro SD card socket. The proof of concept, uh, essentially this was uh, just 
to see uh, can make real music on this thing. Uh, maybe two oscillators, maybe triangles, sawtooth. Uh, this is done, by the way. The target date was the 17th. Uh, I'm actually wrapping up the documentation on it now. Um, that should be done, in, oh, probably Monday-ish. Um, and then uh, uh, first release, I'm going to rescope the project after uh, the proof of concept. Uh, I'm in the middle of that now. Uh, but basically, I need to uh, figure out what the audio performance constraints are, uh, how much I can, uh, which synthesis uh, algorithms work in, in the time constraints uh, to generate real-time audio. Um, uh, all of the synthesis and IO audio words will be done. Um, the goal is, uh, the kind of stretch goal is to have all of the synthesis algorithms that are in C Sound 7. And the target date for that is Memorial Day. I'm pretty sure I can make that. Uh, the second release is the signal flow graph interpreter uh, and algorithmic composition tools. And the target date for that's July 4th. And the full release uh, with the live performance user interface and uh, multiple on Pico Ensemble synchronization, uh, probably over wireless. I've heard horror stories about wireless, but uh, these things aren't going to be that far apart. Uh, I have uh, I have approximately uh, I have approximately twelve units of various uh, kinds that I can put together. I have four of each of the uh, audio packs. Uh, so I can do like Mendelssohn's octet and have uh, room left over for audience cheering. And target date for that's Labor Day. So there's the GitHub repo. Um, there's the blog, uh, which is where I'm uh, basically documenting everything. Um, and then there's the link to this presentation. Uh, which will be uh, uploaded momentarily. And if uh, Kevin will give me the uh, email address, I'll uh, email the final slides. And then there's where you can find me on the web. Uh, mostly, I've, I've pretty much abandoned Twitter. I was a Twitter regular from like early 2007 uh, until. Uh, you know who uh, kind of stepped in and uh, tried to make it uh, his own. Um, I migrated to master, uh, Mastodon. I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Bandcamp. And uh, the music that comes out of uh, these uh, Picos uh, will end up there. And there are all the references. So, any questions? Let me unshare my screen here. Any questions? Since you had a link embedded in your talk, Dave, Dave Jaffe you won't need anything else. He's got uh, a link to your slides now, and he'll post uh, a copy of them on our website. As all of the slides made available, uh, by our speakers are uh, duly posted. And I'd like to thank Dave for uh, keeping, to uh, keeping the flow of coal into the maw of the uh, uh, FIG and SVFIG uh, website going. Uh, I have a comment about uh, Wi-Fi, about uh, Wi-Fi support. Uh, currently, Wi-Fi support in Zepto Forth is in the works for the uh, Rio RP2040, but that's been, before I consider it even slightly done, has been pushed back largely due to quality problems with the ESP8285 radio used by the Rio RP2040. 
and what will get out to the Pico W will be after I either consider myself done with this or I finally give up in frustration with this board I've been working on for. It's getting towards two months now. And it's been a complete waste of time, to be honest. I have Pico W's if if you want me to if you want me to mail you a couple of them. Um, oh, I, I have one that's still in its package. Yet. And there's a lot of so I... Travis, let me let me ask you if there's anything you'd care to present uh, going forward, uh, not necessarily this month, but in the future. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly specifically about fourth, and we're welcome to hear uh, anything you'd care to say. Well, when I get something with Wi-Fi support that I consider to be reasonably acceptable, I might want to, might want to present it. But at this point, even if I get it so that the real RP twenty forty doesn't lock up after between half an hour and a few hours of operation of constantly sending data over Wi-Fi. Uh, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some major, or there's one big firmware bug in the radio that it uses that I don't consider acceptable for being presented at this point just due to that. Yes, you can get new firmware for the chip it uses for the Wi-Fi, but I haven't seen yet a convenient way of loading it onto the uh, ESP8285 that is used by the wheel RP2040. Maybe I'll have better luck with the Pico W once I get onto that. Brad, it would be nice to have any Wi Fi support that you'd care to make about Wi Fi support and embedded processors? Uh, uh, I mean, most of our experiences with the ESP32, so they're, they're unfortunately, we're building on the, on the stack that's. Uh, in the C implementation, so I'm not. I'm not sure. There's a direct. Yeah, I, I, I'm not quite following the issue with this one. So, so you wouldn't suggest that he go over to the ESP32 as a as an alternative. If, if you're looking for a, for a, for a CPU that's that's got a, a fairly well packaged uh, Wi-Fi stack, yes, I would recommend the ESP32 family. Although. Yeah. Although if you, although the bare metal is you know not not really open, so I, I, I'm I'm not quite sure whether you're you're trying to are you trying to do direct in the hardware or are you trying to do on top of somebody else's Wi-Fi stack. Well, I'm using the Wheel RP2040, which has a separate RP2040 chip and a separate ESP2-8285 chip. And they're connected with SPI. Basically, everything with regards to the Wi-Fi stack and the TCP IP stack live on the uh, ESP8285. And the big unsurmountable bug is that if you try to close a connection, the ESP 285 crashes until it's uh, watchdog reboots it, which is very troublesome. And it's and I've looked online about people using the ESP 8285 and the ESP 8286 
No, ASP266. So, so I've used the ASP8266, and it's it's a little more stable. But I mean, if you're what, what, the the sort of separate, you know, but, but even that one was kind of, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't speak to the 8285, but the the 8266 um, has, uh, you know, you can you can get the stack up and running. I haven't controlled it remotely over SPI or anything like that. So not not sure. What why yeah. do you, why do you want them in a separate why do you have them in separate devices that that uh the reason why is because I uh, let's say I'm ESP32 fourth can't control the entire system. Rather, fourth is a separate application. Ah, I see. I see. So you're tr you're trying to trying to have underneath. A... Got it. Got fourth it. Fourth is a separate application. Got it. So you're Where trying to just say Zept. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, whereas where yeah, what I'm saying is that the at the ESP two eight thirty two fourth is an application that runs under free R talks. Mm -hmm. And you only get to have one of your two cores to yourself. The other core is devoted to the uh, Wi-Fi stack. Mm -hmm. Whereas with uh, Zeptoforth on the RP2040, you get to have you get to have full control of the entire MCU. And furthermore, you get to use both cores. Which is very helpful for applications where you want better real time performance than even the Zepto Fourth RTOS can provide. Mm -hmm. So you stick your code that needs to be really time sensitive on one of the cores, and then you shut down multitasking on that core. So it's essentially a single tasking system on one core, but multitasking on another core. So you can have both tighter real-time performance on one core, yet to have all the niceties of a multitasking environment on the other core. I, 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 okay, I, that, that sort of makes sense to me, actually. Yeah, because if you're, yeah, so I, I as, you know, I, it's an, it's a good good point that the, you know, on the on the ESP chips, you're not able to sort of yeah control the whole thing and and. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think and I think the the uh, ESP eighty two sixty six that that was originally the intended mode of operation was to use it as kind of like an external modem or something to to talk to the network. So that but yeah, I I, I can't speak to the other one. You're seeing stability issues basically is the the core. Yeah, the ESP eighty two eighty five is just an ESP two eighty two sixty six, except for that instead of using an external quad SPI flash. It uses an odd chip flash that is one megabyte. That's the only real difference between the two chips. Oh, huh. So, so I do know. I do know there are like commercial products out there with the the eighty two sixty six in them. I think like my sprinkler controller and stuff like that are are, are using it. I, I have also heard tell though that there are some. Some bugs in that stack. I don't know if those are things that have been fixed over time, like where, where there's the big bug that I see other people reporting the connection closure bug as well. Mm -hmm. Other people are saying, yeah, it was really tricky to get it so that you could close connection without having the MC without the radio rebooting on you. Mm. Yeah, other people reported that as well with the 8266, mm -hmm. which isn't surprising because the code used by the 8285 and 8266 should be quite similar. Mm -hmm. And the and in general, the I'm not impressed in the quality of the product, to put it simply. <laughs> that sounds like a good place to uh get back on track here. Uh, okay. Are there any questions or comments for Ed? Yeah, I, for, uh, yeah. Um, I'm too clumsy to, to make music myself, but I, I know uh, some people who've been uh, rather involved. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Laurie Spiegel and, and her work? She apparently um, 
made um, uh, something called Music Mouse. It, but she was my uh, backyard neighbor when I grew up. And um, uh, yeah, she's, what I guess, pretty famous in the, uh, she was at Bell Labs, actually, for quite a while. Yeah, I, uh, I have been a fan of Laurie Spiegel since uh, uh, the 1970s. Uh, uh, she, she was uh, pretty much unknown, and, uh, except by real hardcore aficionados. She worked with uh, Max Matthews, who sort of created this whole digital synthesis uh, uh, realm. Uh, and I believe she did a movie score uh, like maybe 10, 15 years ago and became famous. Well, she she also uh, did the composition that is on the Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 um, that had a disc of human stuff and, and her composition is on there. Um, I'm also uh, wondering, uh, are you familiar with um, with Stanley Jordan? Um, uh, who's more that like, name I don't recognize. Uh, he's a, a guitarist who's uh, um, very, if you will, he, he's described in one of his things uh, talking about playing against clouds of sound, playing his guitar against clouds of sound created an APL and he's got a number of he's worth uh, looking at because he's written a, a bunch of things that are involved with music theory and so forth too um, but um, uh, yeah he's there's a movie with him with Bruce Willis uh, uh, actually but he's um, uh, definitely again actually one demo at, at an APL conference at Stanford actually was really impressive where he essentially asked people in the audience to give a short, simple APL expression. And then he would go in in his head, turn it into MIDI and then play it on his guitar. And, I mean, the guy's a uh, bright. Uh, and just to finish it off, I have a friend who's an APLer over in um, Jan Carmen on, on LinkedIn. And he's retired to just creating uh, classical, I don't know the categories, even fugues and I don't know this and that, but but he's just very, um, again, he's, he's sort of, I guess, in the Bach mode, go and, and see what combinatorics go and sound decent. But uh, anyway, uh, definitely uh, this uh, interesting thought, but yeah, Lori was was my uh, backyard neighbor, and uh, I knew her in, in in she's in the in the old dairy district in uh, in Manhattan, uh, Tribeca, uh, when I was there. And she just, as a matter of fact, if you go to to uh, Cozy and go to my um, daily daily diary, daily blog, uh, and search for Lori, you will find a recent. Uh, uh, article there where she was uh, listed among the four um, most um, I don't know uh, influential female uh, people in music. So okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, any other questions, comments for Ed? All right, uh, are we ready to move on? Great, uh, Don Golding, and. Uh, the core folks uh, will be taking up the rest of the meeting. Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to uh, leave time for at the end? Uh, Doug, I'm looking at you. Do you have any <laughs> additional? All right. On that no, note. No, uh, I had to turn, turn the voice on. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd like to talk to... Um, or about what came up last month, uh, either Brad or De uh, Dennis, uh, okay. about uh, car stuff, but I can wait till the end for that. Okay. Uh, that may be afternoon at the rate Don goes. So, <laughs> uh, so Don, it's all your 